Hey guys, uh, this is Al again. I'm uh, back at the shop. Really haven't spent that much time over here over the last um, few weeks. I've uh, been primarily focused on my day job, which is uh, pretty much how I you know, my living and pay for all this stuff. And um, also focused on spending my money on the building uh, across the street that I want to turn into basically a man cave slash garage, you know, I'm going to have a little office space and then a place where I want to keep my cars, I can probably store about 10 cars in there, so 3,000 square foot building, and keep the nice cars in there so I don't have to uh, have them over here in the shop where they get dirty and dusty, and, you know, all that stuff. Um, it's a slow process, there's lots of permits that we need to go through and you know how that goes. But uh, I have uh, been pretty active. Uh, first thing I did is I sold the E55, which I really didn't want to sell, but um, you know I need I need some money to fund some of these projects, and I and I also bought new purchase, which is what I'm going to show you today. Um, anyway, so uh, I couldn't help myself. I had to buy something new. Uh, I've been really disciplined the last um, last year or so, really. I've this deal came along and it looked like a good, good enough. I mean, it was a good enough deal for this economy, right? Because right now the pandemic is just inflating all the prices. Um, and I know that your Rolls Royce and Bentley guys are going to appreciate this as well um, because it is a Bentley. So let me just show you what it is. It's kind of tight in this shop, so I'm not going to be um, moving the car out. It's still we're waiting on registration documents to come through. I bought it. Um, out of state, so uh, I'm not going to drive it right now, but let me show you. All right, guys, there you have it. It's a um, 2000 Bentley Azure. Um, the mileage on the clock shows around like 49,000 miles. Um, I picked it up out of Florida, which is a terrible place to buy a car from, South Florida. Um, I'll talk about that in a little bit as well. Um, came out of the same auction as my um, my Corniche actually but it's a, a 2000 model Azor it's in the same color as my other 2000 fire, fire damage car and um, it overall it's in okay shape um, I'll talk about that in a little bit as well in the pictures it presented itself very very well uh, which is sometimes dangerous Right, um, I bought it, I, I'm not going to say how much I paid for it, but I didn't pay a huge amount of money for it. I paid more than uh, Tyler Hoover paid for his car, but not a horrible amount of money. Um, it cost me about $1,100 to ship it from uh, Florida to, to Dallas. It took more than a week to bring over here and get, get a driver to pick it up. Um, you know, I. I Transportation has become a huge problem as part of the, the supply chain issue. I think the biggest issue with transportation is not so much the fuel costs, it's the fact that, you know, people are getting paid the same amount of money to drive 300 miles as they used to be able to drive 1,200 miles, and they don't want to drive 1,200 miles anymore. They, they, they want to make a trip and go home, stay in the house, you know, which is reasonable. I mean, I'd, I'd want to do the same. So I don't think you know these drivers are wanting to do the distance that they used to, which means that there's a lot fewer long haul drivers out there um, that are wanting to ship cars. But anyway, um, let me show you around the car and then I'll point out some of the problems and then ask some really uh, interesting questions because I, I really need to understand the profile of a Bentley or Rolls Royce owner. Um, I, I don't get it, right? So uh, maybe some of you guys who are familiar with these cars can help me. Right? So again, the car has 48,000 miles. Um, I'm guessing it, it lived outside. We've got some clear damage over here. Um, there's some bleeding back on the roll street you know, for the roll top. You can see that this piece of wood over here must have been in terrible shape and they just basically brushed on some kind of lacquer and it looks like a disaster. And there's like pieces of veneer missing that they just kind of went over it. 
So all of this needs to be removed and sanded back. Um, the wood's got cracks on it. And um, it does have um, an interesting feature. So when I bought the car, the, the battery was completely dead. And um, we jumped it, or the driver jumped it before I got there. And I, um, let, me turn this, let me turn this fan on so you can hear me better. But the driver jumped it and rolled it off the trailer. And, uh, you know, he told me that the battery is just completely roasted. He, he thought it was the alternator. Um, but when he pulled the battery jump box off, it, it, it ran. You know, he, he, he would tell me, that, hey, if you take the jump box off, it wouldn't run. But I guess the car had ran long enough to where um, the alternate was supporting the electrics. So um, I drove it home, put the battery on the charger. Battery was reading about 12 volts. Get back to the, ch uh, to, to, the uh, um, to the battery about maybe seven or eight hours later with the charger on it, a you know, four amp charger and it was reading four volts so it was pulling a massive current what i came to find out is that the blower fans were just constantly on and somebody appears to have hot wired this switch okay to to power up the blower motor fans so i'm not sure exactly what the deal is here um, but that's what somebody did and I guess the control units failed or something else like that and they decided that this is the way that they're going to solve that problem. But let me show you the problem. So we're pull, pulling the hood. So, you know, obviously being um, that the blower motor is consist consistently on, you know, my thoughts were it may be something like, what, what do they call that Darlington resistor or Darlington transistor that they have on, um, on uh, Jaguars, where if it fails, the blower motor will just const continuously run and drain the battery. I have that exact problem on my XJS. So um, what I was doing is I thought, well, maybe I should start looking at the relays. And um, you can tell somebody's been in through here at some point or another because bunch of these screws are missing but this is what I found and I didn't touch it because I wanted to show you guys this so I don't know whether you can see this let me see if I can zoom in yeah okay lower it okay so this is the blow motor resistor so the blow motor uh, uh, relay what appears to have happened, check this out, can you see this? Somebody had cut the wires and they spliced them together so that they could wire up that little black switch to turn on the, um, the, the blower motor. And this is how they wrapped it. They wrapped it with blue masking tape. So now you have 12 volts going through that little switch. Um, I don't see a, another relay, so it looks like it's just getting 12 volts straight to that switch. You know, I, I, I don't know what to say about that. Um, but this, I mean, you know, masking tape, blue masking tape to insulate these wires. So I, I have a question, like, who are you? Rolls-Royce owners that pay people to work on your cars who do this kind of work, right? Who, who are you, you know, and, and what are you trying to do? Because this isn't, you know, I don't know, like if you take a car to a Jiffy Lube, I can't imagine anybody who calls themselves a mechanic doing this. I, I can't, right? No, nobody in their right mind would not use an electrical tape to splice connections. So, you know, who, who are these guys that you're finding to work in your cars? And what situation are you under where you go out and you buy, you know, if, I don't know what these cars cost when they were new, like $300,000? Like, what do they cost today? Um, 
but they, you'd go out and you'd basically pay somebody to work on your car like that. Or are you doing this work yourself? I have no idea what you guys are doing, but please stop it, you know? If you own one of these cars and you don't want to spend the money paying a dealer or a specialist on this car, just find a good mechanic. Find a good mechanic. They usually cost anywhere between $75 an hour, $125 an hour, depending on where you live and, and who they are, right? Just find a good mechanic. A good mechanic will be able to work on these cars. They may not be able to to know everything that there is on it, but there's forums that will direct you to manuals that they can look through to figure out the problems, and a competent mechanic will figure out the problem. This looks like something that a meth head who's trying to wash cars at the local public car wash did, right? You know, this isn't something that a mechanic would do, right? So I, I, I don't know what you guys are are uh, doing. And it seems like it's a Florida thing because my Corniche also had some crazy wiring. Just stop it. <laughs> you know, don't do this to your cars, right? You're not, you're not doing yourselves any favors. Um, it's a 48,000 mile car. You know, I, I get some of the stuff that's wrong with it. You know, the steering wheel's in horrible shape. The dashboard's in not good shape. Somebody's uh, uh, tied up the, uh, the wood to make it look good in pictures. It's deceptive, but that's kind of seems to be very common practice for Florida car dealers, car sellers. Um, but this is, this is freaking dangerous, right? This, this you'll, you'll burn a car down that way. So yeah, that's, that's all I have to say about that. Uh, let me put this back and I'll show you around the rest of the car. So, but one thing about this car is that it does run pretty well. Um, and uh, I did bring my Omnitech with me and I will scan it so that I can check for codes. Um, there are some, um, uh, there was a check engine light when I was uh, in it earlier on. So I've got to figure out what the deal is with that. I also want to program a, a key fob, which I have a spare key fob. Um, so I want to program one of those, see how that works out. But uh, uh, I think that I can make this into a nice car, right? And, and the reason that I think I can make this into a nice car is because of this. So this is my fire damaged um, Azure. I bought this car maybe about two, three years ago. Um, it has had a fire, probably the same fire that, that all of these cars have, which is the fuel rail oil rings that causes a, the engine to burn down. But it's exactly the same color, and uh, apart from the fire damage, you know, the, the interior is actually in, in probably in better shape than the interior in, in my car. So the seats are actually in pretty good shape. They have some smoke, you know, damage on them, but they're in good shape. Um, the wood is different actually it's kind of it's actually nicer the woods is nicer um soft top it's got a good soft top the other one has a good soft top as well um and this thing has like the mullen vents and the wide the wide fender flares which i kind of wish the other one did because i really like those maybe one day if i decide to do body work on it i'll swap them over but you know i can do things like just swap these mirrors straight over you know, and not have to deal with the clear coat damage um fixing that and um, these also have the 18 inch wheels but they don't have any any uh, uh, center caps on them but you know I think I think with this car I, I will be able to make a very nice car out of the other one so you know every cloud crowd has uh, every cloud has a silver lining and um, I guess that's the that's the silver lining on that one so um, what I'm going to do now is, is I'm just going to get it running scan the codes and we'll see what codes come up as well. It did have a check engine light and air bag light that's on. So we just got to figure that out. Anyway, um, that's it for now. And uh, thank you very much. And I hope you enjoy the new purchase. I'm sure I will. Once the title comes in, I'll get it registered. Take it for a cruise. All right, thanks very much. Take care, bye-bye.